So in today's lecture, we'll be studying about the stones, continuing with about the stones. And in the last lecture, when we left, we were talking about the different types of stones. So let me share with you the codes related with the different types of stones. These are IS codes. This is the first code, IS, Indian Standard Code for stone masonry construction, for rubble stone masonry construction. This is the first one, IS 1597. And its reprint is in March 1996. And probably there is another reprint that has happened in 2013. So this is about rubble stone masonry. Now, what is rubble stone masonry? It's, I can show you the figures in, which are given in this code itself. It's not the dressed uh, stone masonry. It's undressed stone masonry. So th this is the rubble stone masonry that you can encounter, wherein you have undressed faces of the stones. The faces are not properly dressed. So this is one such type. Then you have even more types of rubble masonries. These are all rubble masonries. Now, then I was discussing last time when we left, we were discussing about the different types of rubble masonries. This is the first one, which is the uncoursed rubble masonry. Here, the courses are not well defined. For example, you, you would see here, uh, here, this, this is a separate uh, course that is building up. So th there is no proper layering of the courses in this, like the layers would have happened one above the other. That's not happening here. So it becomes an uncoursed rubble masonry. A, a, a rubble, because it is, uh, the faces of the stones are not properly dressed uh, into proper shape, uh, smooth face, uh, uh, textured faces that you would get. That's not visible here in the rubble masonry. Second one, which you have, is this the coarsed random rubble masonry brought to the courses. In this a type of uh, rubble masonry, what you would encounter is there are um, courses being developed, although they are random. Random means, for example, it's there is one here. Let me try to zoom this up if it happens. So this is the, these are different ones, but they are being brought into courses. So overall, what we are getting is a course uh, is being developed. So this overall is becoming one course. Then there is another course or another layer, then third one. So they are being developed into courses, although they are random random means you don't have a proper stone but there are many stones together are being brought into courses so this is another form of rubble masonry wherein the courses are brought to uh, the random rubbles are brought to courses the third one is the square ra rubble uncoursed masonry so in this type of rubble masonry what you are encountering is you are getting this is uh, a course another course so but they are square ones they are not random so they are being brought into uh, to courses all these are brought into courses but each stone is square in shape so and brought properly into courses so you have now overall in the looking at the face as well you will have the a rubbles and into layers brought into layers so but there might still not be uh, along the length proper alignment in such courses of rubble masonry then you have the fourth one which is the square rubble masonry brought to courses now 
in this type, what you are encountering is you have further courses being developed. These ones, and these are not uh, random ones. You don't have anything, and uh, a, a small ones uh, in between and in in the heart of the uh, uh, rubble masonry. So almost what you have had into into courses like these but each one of these is not uh, each one of these is square in shape so this is the th uh, third one that you have fourth one and then you could also have square rubble masonry which is properly square ones these are all square in shapes all of them are square in shape. They are all brought into layers or into courses. And then you have certain things associated with the rubble masonry. I'll go be going into the details of each one of these. Let me go to the... So what is a rubble masonry actually? And when you look at the stone masonry, it starts from here at the base, stone masonry wall, it's starting at the base. Then you have stones being laid one above the other, and then you reach to a windowsill level. And just forget about this, that there is a brick being a uh, wall being laid here at the back of this. So above the win window sill level, there is a window here. You have a parapet or you have a lintel here above it. And then stones are laid one above the other. And then you reach to a string course. The string course is the band which is provided in the masonry. Similar to you have in the wall masonry made up of bricks. There also you have a band being provided just below the slab level. Similarly, the string course is being provided here. And then you have a cornice at the top above the string course. Between them, there is another stone layer. The cornice is projected portion here of the stone masonry. Why is it provided? Because you don't want the water to uh, or the rainwater to gush onto the surface of the stone masonry. So the cornice is a elongated, horizontally elongated uh, masonry which is provided, and it prevents the rains from splashing onto the uh, onto this. Similarly, cornice also provides the base for the parapet which is provided above it. So, and then over the parapet you have a coping again of the stones. So this would be how the stone masonry would look like for a building from base up till the top usme kon kon si different layers aayegi both aapko yahan par nazar aa rahi hai isme in this figure so once you have this then you start building in for when you are building in the uh, rubble masonry and you have different uh, layers let me go to and different things associated with it. Uh, first of all, when you are providing uh, the rubble masonry, you or the, any type of stone masonry, you have to provide the bed joint. So what is the bed joint? You, you have to fix the, uh, there will be a first layer, uh, you would have plinth or something else. So you provide a bed joint of the stone with the plinth. Either you can provide double bars made up of steel or you could have any type of horizontal joint being provided between the two. So this, this is very important that you have to provide the bed joint. Similarly, you have to then, once the masonry construction is done, you have different 
stones now uh, this is these this is one course what is one course here one course here is on the, in which one layer is being fit fit so course could be of any thickness then within this you have the hearting inside this hearting is filling up of small small stones this hurting or hearting is small stones being provided to fill up the inside portion between the stones i told you that the stones are laid the outside ones and the inside ones are first laid and then it's filled up with the small small bits of stones in between and then you can also fill it up with the mortar at the same time after filling up with the stones you can fill up with the mortar what is mortar mortar is sand plus cement or you can also use surki or limestone as well and pour that within the hurting or the inside of this stone masonry wall then there is one stone this one this one's here this is through stone what is through stone through stone is the stone which is going right from this face up till the inner face other stones are not going through and through and now what is the reason of for providing through stone because it helps in uh, vertically it helps in putting up a joint at so after every certain intervals kuch courses ke baad we provide a th through stone and what does the through stone do it is providing the joint from the outer to the inner face in the stone masonry wall so through stone is a very important uh, joint providing stone uh, in the stone masonry construction and without this the stone masonry wall cannot sustain remain standing and so you need to provide certain stones at regular intervals after a certain courses which run through and through from one face to the other face so very important to provide this uh, stone in then you have when we are, we were talking about this uh, this the square rubble masonry you have the bond stone you can it's also the through stone so but the difference between the bond stone and the through stone is the through stone is not properly it's uh, shaped the bond stone would be properly shaped so although both are rubble masonries but uh, this one the bond stone is much properly shaped it has got a clear and and the bond stone uh, at times is quite in uh, good in thickness as compared to the through stone then we discuss about the coping at the top and the coping is being provided in order to prevent the splashing at the top coping is also provided at the top because we want this is coping here coping stone so because we want the stones to be rested over by certain um, flat stone at the top uh, so that the stones at the top do not fall off so we require coping at the top of the stone masonry wall given these things then there are various other things like you have corbels being provided there a figure for that oh, i'll explain it here you have corbels so and the cornices of uh, the corner stone you have this there just a yes the corbel is the stone bonded into the wall with part of it projecting out of the face of the wall to form a bearing surface so it is provided in i had the figure here yes so oh, there is no figure for corbel uh, no so you have a stone which uh, is bonded into the wall for example you have a wall here so part of the uh, stone will be bonded into the wall like this and then it will be projected outside so why do you do that because you want a surface on which things could be placed uh, outside so you want a bearing surface for example below a window sill 
uh, you want the bearing surface so some part of the uh, stone is then projected outside so this stone becomes the corbel stone then about the cornice you have it's a projection the horizontal projection again below the window sill or certain other places but it has got a projected end as well as the chamfered end and below like this so th this is a cornice a stone above which another corbel stone is provided so this becomes the corbel then and then you would have the corner stone below which which is on which this corb uh, corbel is resting then there is this joggle what is joggle it's actually a key provided inside ye ek key hai so why is it provided ek uh, stone ko dusre stone ke sath connect karne ke liye so for example this this is the jog key and of the joggle and then it connects with the other one and then it goes into the third one so it could be of different things uh, it could just be made up of the stone itself the joggle wherein one uh, stone is connecting with the other stone through a projected end usme ek projected end ho sakta hai then you have the dovels now what is a dovel this is a dovel now it's made up of steel mostly oh first of all is my stone mix there is a, a pit like thing made and then you have an, a double steel bar put inside it and then this is going into the jo uske upar ek aur core se stone ka it usme bhi thoda sa pit type bana hai so this is fitting between the two so what it does it do it takes up the transverse loads it takes up the tension loads in the stone masonry because i told you last time that stone masonry is poor in uh, tensile uh, capacity so uh, double bars are also provided i just showed you they could be provided at the bed joint which is the lowest most joint here here इसके नीचे अगर बेड जॉइंट होगा सो डॉवल बार्स कुड बी प्रोवाइडेड राइट गोइंग इनटू द स्टोन मेसनरी सो दैट कुड आल्सो बी अ डॉवल बार सो वी कॉल इट एज अ डॉवल बार इट्स प्रोवाइडेड एट दैट पॉइंट एज वेल सो कमिंग टू द एंड दिस इज अबाउट द रबल मेसनरी एंड इट्स टाइप्स एंड व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट फीचर्स ऑफ द स्टोन रबल मेसनरी now coming to the properties of the materials of the stone masonry first of all we discussed about different origins of stone masonry in the last class which i talked about the igneous rocks the metamorphic rocks like the granite and the others the marbles the sandstones i talked about this in the last class what is the origin of the rocks and the stones then coming to the quality of each one of these stones i talked about this that the stones should be strong hard and durable i discussed this in the points that the quality of the stones should be such that they are strong hard and durable just the saying is uh, the quality of the stones they should be strong hard and durable so we discussed this in the last class as well then about the strength of the stones the different types of stones strength of the stones granite ki crushing strength 100 newton per mm square which i told you last time that the compressive strength or the crushing strength of the stone could easily go up to 100 mega pascals so granite ki sabse zyada hai basalt 40 limestone ki usse kam 20 sandstone is 30 marble is 50 and laterite stones are 3 so very less laterite stones so you cannot use them for masonry construction purposes so and this is a uh, strength comparison of different stones then you move to the durability we discussed this last time that uh, there are things related to durability which is related to the water absorption which i discussed the last time and the water absorption the percentage of water absorption Should not generally exceed five percent, 
and it usually does not happen other than in the stones which are made up of limestone ones the laterite stones and others it does not usually absorb water to a, uh, to that extent so then you have the size of the stones how what should be the size of the stone i told you this last time that the stones should have uh, the stone masonry wall could be easily thick uh, enough or being even it could easily go up till 700 mm in thickness so 700 mm is a quite thick wall how much how much do you think is 700 mm 0.7 meters it is 2 feet se kareeban 2 feet ke upar ek stone masonry wall ki thickness ja sakti hai the thickness of the wall should not be less than 150 mm yet this is what the code says and should should not be greater than 3/4 of the thickness of the wall so on the at the base the length of the stone shall not exceed 3 times the height of so there are various things related to this first of all the thickness the thickness should not be less than 150 mm to ye 150 mm se hamesha mota hona chahiye the thickness of the wall should be 150 mm se mota wall hona chahiye which is around 6 inches 6 inch se upar hona chahiye the height of the stone for stone masonry wall may go up till 300 mm to ek stone ki height जो एक स्टोन है उसकी हाइट 300 सौ mm तक हो सकती है ऑफ अ स्टोन मैसरी वॉल इट कुड इजिली गो अप फॉर इट्स हाइट कुड गो अप टू थ्री हंड्रेड एम एम देन देर आर थिंग्स रिलेटेड टू हेयर दिस हेयर द लेंथ ऑफ द स्टोन शल नॉट एक्सीड थ्री टाइम्स द हाइट तो एक स्टोन की लेंथ जो है its length and height ke beech mein 3 is to 1 maximum ratio hona chahiye ye iski height hai h stone ki and ek stone ki baat kar raha and the breadth on the base shall not be greater than 3/4 of the thickness of the wall to ek ye agar wall hai to this much thick if the wall is this much thick it should be 3/4 तक मैक्सिमम होना चाहिए इसकी ब्रेथ ऑफ द स्टोन ये थिकनेस है वॉल की दिस इज थिकनेस ऑफ द वॉल टोटल थिकनेस टी सो दिस शुड नॉट एक्सीड ग्रेटर देन थ्री बाई फोर टी सो इट शुड बी लेस देन थ्री बाई फोर टी एक स्टोन की थिकनेस लेकिन जो बॉन्ड स्टोन होते हैं या थ्रू स्टोन होते हैं जो आर पार जाते हैं ओनली दे आर अलाउड टू है ओवरऑल थिकनेस टी अदर स्टोन शुड बी लेस देन थ्री बाई फोर्थ of this so how do you select uh, each one of these uh, stones that's important the selection of the stone is done on these basis the uh, it's based on the different situations in which you are placing i told you this last time that different stones can encounter different exposure conditions so as per the exposure conditions you have to use different types of stones at different places for example uh, you are using a stone a uh, masonry in situation where there is a water body somewhere near between so you would always require a better quality stone which is not water absorbing so you would all preferably go for metamorphic rocks which absorb less uh, water now see if you want stone masonry uh, for purposes which are um, meant for the uh, ornamental purposes or decorative purposes you would even go for laterite even limestone stones because they offer you good amount of decorative features and which are prevalent in such stones but you could also get them in igneous or the metamorphic stones but the sand stones and others will always serve you better decorative purposes so the selection of the stone as per the table 2 here uh this recommended use agar aapko masonry work water ke andar kar diya submerged in water you would go for dense stones like granite and nice so you in water ke andar you have to granite you must have seen in the kitchens it does not absorb much of the water 
then if you want to do masonry work exposed to smoke chemical fumes again you will go for granite and you can also go for quartzite which is also a crystalline uh, stone um, made from the metamorphosis then you have the fine resistant masonry ke liye agar aapko kar and it's uh, you want nice decorative uh, uh, ornamental features to add to it first you you would use sandstone and then you could add the marble and uh, the soft stones again of uh, the sandstone so these this is the limestone that you are adding for the ornamental purposes for masonry below plinth cores or in contact with the soil agar wo soil ke sath contact mein hai then you should go for granite and nice now you must have seen uh, stones being used here uh, in, for different purposes you are using different stones in your houses and in in our area uh, for example let me show you certain 